Welcome to 32 Bar Cut, the show, a show where we talk with our friends about what it's like to be a performer. Today on 32 Bar Cut, the show, we are going way down in Hades Town with Kimberly Marable. It's time to welcome on our guest, my favorite by far, a Broadway star. Kimberly Marable. I am so excited to invite you onto the show, Kimberly. You are so amazing, and I can't wait to show more people how amazing you are. Thank you for being on the show. Thank you for having me. And just quick sidebar, that song is amazing. (laughs) (laughs) That just brought me a lot of joy. Thank you for that. (laughs) I'm so glad. Austin wrote the lyrics to that. And it's just, you know, a little fun way to start the show, set it up and very in a very musical theater way, you know? (laughs) Definitely. (laughs) Definitely. So how have you been? What's going on with you? I know I haven't seen you in so long. And I'm I'm just curious... How are you doing? Um, it's been too long. Let's r- be really real about that. Um, and I'm really happy to be seeing you today. Um, I'm doing okay. This has been a really um, transitional period. I mean, everybody is pivoting, so that's like the norm. But I feel like I still haven't quite settled. Mm. Um like, I'm always like, oh, what is what is happening? Um, yeah, but I feel you on that. Yeah, like it's it's new to do the freelance thing, right? To like have a schedule and there's all these different things, all these different setups you've planned to do, and it's it's hard to keep track. It's really hard to keep track, and then like you try to add some stability, like have a regular schedule, and then. It's something always goes awry. Mm -hmm. So it's just, it's, it's new, like you said. And I, you know, I'm just trying to make the best of it. And all I can really do is take it day by day. Absolutely. uh, Yeah. But other than that, I'm doing well. My family's good. Everybody's healthy. Trying to keep Rona free. 2021. And uh, (laughs) um, yeah, it's also been good, like in our household to just kind of reconnect like my mm-hmm. partner and I just to reconnect and really um, invest in time with each other. So that mm-hmm. that has been really great. Um, yeah, I think for Austin and I, we have spent so much time apart. He would be touring, I'd be here, I'd be off somewhere. You know, we. I think if we really sat down and looked at the days that we've spent together and the days we've spent apart before all of this happened, I think most of our time has been apart, and so. We've spent the last year together every single day, and I'm grateful for it because it kind of reassures me that we still like each other. <laughs> yes. And yes. That's good. Yeah. And we've been having fun, and we started this, you know, this show and everything. And so I can completely identify with that for sure. And um, I, I'm curious to know, like, When you say pivot and everything, I know you've been up to some voiceover work and you've been working at Drexel University and and, and Broadway Plus and doing all that stuff. So um, in your efforts to pivot, but also to keep yourself busy, maybe put some money in the bank account Mm -hmm. and stay (laughs) inspired, um, are you finding yourself changing in any way or? Oh my goodness, definitely, definitely changing. Even the way that I approach every day, um, I mean, from a schedule standpoint, I'm always like, what day is it? What does what today <laughs> have in store? What does tomorrow have in store? Um, but I'm also thinking more globally, too. Like, in normal life, you know, I, I work a lot with young people, but having a set of students that I'm personally responsible for is a very different thing. Um, in terms of nurturing them and ensuring that they have a safe space to grow, not Mm -hmm. only as performers, but as human beings. Um, So that's been really enlightening. Um, And you were talking about voiceover. It's just been really cool. Like I, (laughs) I I did voiceovers before, but, you know, the shutdown happened in March and I was like, I got to pay the bills. I don't know how to do that. And so I, I literally 
we built a booth. We like DIY'd our own situation and upgraded all the equipment and invested in in a new career path of which I really had no idea how big it was. Like I've been able to do promos for different shows on like CW for the Super Bowl. Wow. For like, I know for, for um, I was telling you beforehand, I, I was doing like facial motion capture for a video game. I've been reading pilots for, for animated series. Like I have a national commercial for Nicorette. Like, Things that I had no idea were possible because I was busy doing other things. So it's been really nice to just delve into something new um, and find my new creative sweet spots. Yeah, absolutely. I bet it has to feel so good to, to you know, submit an audition or, or, or book something like this and, and, and feel good good about what you're bringing to the table. Like it's so, there's nothing more rewarding than, than having a project or working on something and delivering it. And someone saying, yes, you, we want you come on into this. You're good at this. Mm -hmm. You know, how rewarding it must be to, to discover or rediscover. Cause I know you've done voiceovers before, but to really get a chance to be affirmed in this new skill has got to feel great. It's been really affirming and positive all around. Um, unlike musical theater, I would say you are, especially if you have representation, you are uh, auditioning constantly. Like on any given day, I'm submitting anywhere from three to 10 voiceover auditions. Wow. So it's, and this is daily, you know, and sometimes they come in because everybody's home on the weekend. Like it's a lot. So the fact that I'm booking at all is crazy. And crazy good, but mm-hmm. like, yeah, every every win is is truly a win and definitely something to feel good about. Yeah, I'm curious too because um, we've known each other since I started in The Lion King in 2016. For those of you who don't know, that's how Kimberly and I know each other. <laughs> we were both <laughs> in The Lion King together, and then she went off to do amazing things at Hades Town. And um, I remember when we first met. We, I didn't really know much about your background. And then a friend of mine came to see the show and she was a graduate from Dartmouth. And I realized that you all knew each other. And I was like, oh my gosh. So you went to Dartmouth. And I'm curious as a student at Dartmouth, like what your expectations were of being, you know, a professional performer and, and how they were met, or maybe your bubble was busted a little bit along the way. What was it like to actually pursue this profession? And, and uh, what were your expectations when you were at Dartmouth? Yeah, that's a really great question. Um, and the real of it is that the theater department then is nothing, then was nothing like it is now. Mm. And I did not find myself prepared by my college education really at all um, for a profession in musical theater. Just from the department in general, we did one musical every three years. Whoa. So I did the musical (laughs) my junior year, um, which sidebar is actually how I ended up teaching at Drexel because we had a guest director and he remembered me. I mean, we kept in touch over the years and um, he teaches full time at Drexel. I'm just like, do you want to teach you my students? <laughs> I said, sure, why not? Um, but yeah, so I, mm, the ways that I think Dartmouth did prepare me for a career in general is just work ethic. The way that the, we have a quarter system, there's 10 weeks, you have to be able to do solid work in a short amount of time and thorough work in a short amount of time. Um, and so I do believe that Dartmouth prepared me in that way. Um and yeah, also having exposure to other aspects of life, just being a full human being. Mm-hmm. Um, and really, uh, it exposed me to sociology, which I think is great and necessary for character study, just to observe people and why they do things. Um, the psychology of it all, but less clinical. Um, yeah, but in terms of the artistry, I don't think they had the tools that I needed then. Um, 
they are improving with that. You know, when I speak to to the staff who work there now and um, some of the students, like they definitely have more opportunities for people who are looking to pursue musical theater um, now than they did then. But yeah, I had to figure it out on my own. <laughs> <laughs> it was school of hard knocks. <laughs> oh man, I can identify with that because Lord knows I did not have a theater background at all. So I, every audition was like a, a little masterclass on how to figure out how to live this life. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I'm curious too, like, because you're a native New Yorker, you know, yeah. from Brooklyn, New York, right? <laughs> yeah. Baby. And so, <laughs> and so when you when you came back to New York and you started hitting the pavement and and going on this audition circuit, like, what was that like? Oh, also, what was the musical that you did junior year? What was the one musical you did at Dartmouth? The Apple Tree. The Apple Tree. Okay. Mm-hmm. And I, you know, what is interesting. Um, you're going to have to ask your question again, but I, okay. <laughs> I've, I've been thinking about the apple tree a lot recently because, and I, I just haven't asked um, my director friend yet, uh, colleague, whatever. Um, but you, are you familiar with the show? No, you had to tell okay. me about it. <laughs> so it's, it's a, it's not a very well-known show, but it exists. Um, and it's a three act musical Um, that follows relationships in three different myths. Mm. Um, So it starts with Adam and Eve. Uh, Then it has some like Middle Eastern love story, unrequited love sort of thing. And then the third act is um, Cinderella, uh, but like a modern retelling. And she's, yeah. Yeah. and I keep thinking about a casting choice that was made. Like the way that they cast it, like you would see people in different parts of the love story throughout each act. Mm-hmm. Um, and in the Cinderella act, I was cast as Ella, the chimney sweep, who then wished she, you know, I think it's like fairy godmother, some sort of godmother entity uh, grants her wish to like be a a movie star and the character was turned into this other actress who played um i don't remember the other character's name but the the glamorized version who was gorgeous like that's she has a whole song about how she's gorgeous buxom (laughs) blonde but she was a buxom blonde which i've i've always thought about like Mm. the idea that a, a a clearly presenting black woman Mm -hmm. would wish to be white. Mm -hmm. Um, Which I've never personally experienced that desire. I do know that it exists, but I've always wondered if that was on purpose. So I'll have to ask him and I will. (laughs) Well, more power to you. I hope that you get, I hope that you get your answer because there's, um, I can't see that. Ha- well, I hope that I can't see that happening now, but it's interesting, you know, how much can happen in such a short amount of time, but we still have a, a lot farther to go when it comes mm-hmm. to recognizing things like that and how it can affect young performers, how they see themselves, yeah. uh, what parts they think are right for them, you know, casting yourself before you even get in the room and saying, they're never going to consider me for this role, you know? And that happens to me. That's happened to me last year when we were going in for auditions, you know, newsflash actors audition, even though they're booked all the time, Um, all the time. (laughs) Oh my gosh. (laughs) And you should be like, even though you're booked, you should always be looking ahead. Yeah. Absolutely. And it, it just keeps you sharp. Like, can you imagine doing The Lion King for as long as you did and then you never went on an audition and all of a sudden you're like, oh, I'm ready to move on. I'm going to start auditioning. That Mm-mm. is an uphill climb. OK. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, I think that there's a lot to be said in in type and what we've been taught about type for years and years and years. Like who gets to be the beautiful girl? Who gets to be the ingenue? Who gets to be the wicked stepmother? Who gets to be the uh, best friend, the comedic relief, you know? And it's difficult. I've been called in for leading roles and thought there's no way they're gonna cast me simply because I'm black. Yeah. 
that I thought there's no way they're just meeting a casting quota. And I, I mean, that's part of that is because of what I've experienced, mm. but part of it is also because of how society has trained my brain to think. Yeah. You know? Yeah. But the question I did ask you before was what was it like to go back to New York and start hitting the pavement um, what was that early audition experience like for you? We've never really sat down and talked about this before. I know. <laughs> um, you know, I was actually just really excited to be doing it mm. because the year after Dartmouth, well, the last part of my senior year at Dartmouth, I had convinced myself that I didn't want to perform. Um, you know, outside, outside influences, having their opinion about what I should be doing. And I had found um, producing based on a senior project that we had to do where we had devised some theater um, and we had to collaborate to to put something together. And for my senior project, I ended up producing a, an original piece that was a really great experience. Like, first of all, having Thug Life Poetics be on <laughs> the main like campus billboard <laughs> in the middle of Hanover, New Hampshire. There's nothing that will replace that in my life, you know, in terms of th that visual. But also just being able to bring all sorts of people together for the common goal of putting together great art that is thought provoking and um, that was a really cool experience and everybody brought their own skill set to the table. And I, I was yearning for that, um, sort of collaboration, um, which I imagine we'll talk about producing at some point. Oh yeah. I want to, I want to talk oh. about that. Yeah, for oh, sure. Okay. <laughs> I, um, I actually think, yeah, I put it in for our curtain call. Are you staying for the curtain call? I will stay for the curtain call. Okay, good. Okay, so <laughs> I really wanted to- We got much to catch up we on. We got so much to talk about. <laughs> and I really want to, I want to talk about your producer hat and 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 what you've learned and, mm -hmm. you know, all of that. So I'm definitely going to bring that up, but please cool. continue. I interrupted you a little bit. Oh, no, 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 you didn't. Um, the So long story short, I convinced myself I wanted to be a producer and not a performer. Um, and then- uh, Dartmouth did help me find an internship at um, a theater that they now have like a, a steady relationship with Northern Stage in Vermont, which is like 10 minutes away mm. in the next state over. Um, and I became the company management intern, but I had no supervisor. So I was the company manager with no experience in any sort of theater management what? anything right um so you can and a and a boss who was who, who that's a nice word <laughs> who was difficult uh, that's a good word to use uh, um, she was very difficult at the time especially at, at, i will say she was less than patient because mm. i really didn't know what i was doing and i didn't have the guidance to really know what I should be doing. So when I was doing it, it was already too late, you know? Um, so I, there was a lot of learning on the job, a lot of fast paced learning happening. Um, but I also recognized this is not for me. <laughs> this is not it. I'm just gonna, you know, bide my time, <laughs> save my little bit of coin that I'm making from this money, from this job mm -hmm. and um, learn. Because we were bringing up actors from New York for all of the shows, um, and especially the musicals. So I just took that time to ask everybody what their experiences were, who they're mm -hmm. studying with, where they're taking classes, what does your resume look like, um, how do you find auditions, all the questions that you would find the answers and in a conservatory setting or some sort of academic setting where they prepare you for a career in, in performance. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I basically had to learn it all during that theater season. Um, so by the time I packed up my car with everything I owned and moved back to New York, I was like, oh, I'm ready. I'm hungry. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Do this. And I was just excited. I was excited to finally be home in New York in my old childhood bedroom, <laughs> like auditioning. And this was back when like rent was still open. So like all those open calls and like 
back when equity still, you didn't have to like sign in to be able to look at the audition. So yes, I was auditioning for everything that I thought I could possibly do or that I would want to do. And like you were talking about earlier, just every audition was a masterclass and I was learning as I go um, or learning as I went rather. And it was exciting. It was exciting. And I, I got to learn firsthand, like, okay, this is for me. This is not for me. I'm mm. going to do more of this stuff, you know? It was Figuring cool. out what felt right, you know, exactly. in your body or in your voice or all of the above. Uh, for those listening and watching who aren't uh, familiar with the previous setup for Actors' Equity, uh, when I was auditioning uh, before I was Equity and when Kimberly was auditioning before she got her union card, there was a way that you could get on the site uh, as a non-member and just view all the auditions. And it was such a great way for non-union actors to crash, you know, quote unquote, crash equity auditions. And mm -hmm. this gave you a way to get work in equity union houses and then work towards getting your equity card. Mm -hmm. And that sense has changed. I'm not quite sure why they changed it. As a member of equity, I had no issues because... Um, I have no issues with non-members coming to auditions because equity members always get first dibs anyway. So I, I don't, I don't quite know why they changed it because that was how I got my start. And I think it's how a lot of us got our start. I couldn't agree more. And I think it, it's, it is, like you said, it's a pipeline into the union. Mm -hmm. You know, how are, how are we supposed to get new membership to even have the opportunity to join the union if they don't know about the auditions? I don't Absolutely. know. Absolutely. They'll just get stuck in the uh, the storefront non-union work and they won't be able to burn out. and truck. Girl, all of it. I was, <laughs> I, was, I was visiting my parents. So my parents are still in Brooklyn. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, it was my dad's birthday not long ago. And so we were over there and we just happened to start talking about my various bus and truck experiences. We were talking about blizzards because it just snowed here. And there were two different tours. One of them was a bus and truck where at the end of the, the tour, we were stranded because of the snow and couldn't get off. Like had to be very creative with getting home. Um, but yeah, this bus and truck, we literally drove across the country in a 15 passenger van and a U-Haul. That was definitely impetus to join the union. So I hope that the union figures that out, that like having access to the auditions is is a great way to encourage yeah. people <laughs> to join. Absolutely. It's, 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 it's just, I don't even know. I, I had someone ask on the channel recently, you know, how do you get auditions? And that has changed so much that I don't know exactly what advice I should offer for that because I do want to help, but I'm like, Oh, well, yeah, when I was in Chicago, I, I crashed equity auditions and I I got regular emails every morning from Broadway World. And um, what else did I do? There was this one website that had Chicago based auditions and they were union and non-union, but that was Chicago. You know, mm -hmm. a lot of these kids that are asking questions, they're asking questions for New York because everybody York. wants to go to New York first, you know. Yeah. And it might not always be the best way to start because everybody's here. Mm -hmm. You know, but you were lucky <laughs> in that you already had a home base here because a lot of times people spend a bunch of money to move here. They're working crazy survival jobs just to pay their rent. And mm -hmm. it can be a lot. It can be a lot. <laughs> it is a lot. It's it's the most. It's the no. most. And it keeps I'd... getting steeper and steeper. It's like it won't yeah. quit the rent. Well, I'm talking about the rent. It won't quit. Yeah. Well, I, I'm definitely grateful and it's not lost on me that being from New York definitely helped. Mm. Like I did have a part-time job at a dance studio, but they understood like, mm -hmm. I'm not getting a lot of money, but it's paying the phone bill, which I need to have on. <laughs> <laughs> um, and they let me audition as long as I came back and they got it. They understood, you know, but if I didn't have the home base, like you said, it, I, I'm, pretty positive it would have been a very different experience because I I had the flexibility to just audition mm -hmm. for everything you know well that's incredible and I I'm I'm grateful that you had that flexibility because you've had this amazing career so far and and I've gotten a chance to meet you and have you in my life so I am grateful that that was your story and that was your journey 
The story I don't know is your Broadway debut. I know nothing about it. I want to know the audition. I want to know what show it was. I want to know what was going on in that head of yours. Like, all mm-hmm. of it. Okay. Um, so, uh, I'll start with the blizzard. Okay. <laughs> Not a blizzard. So, this, is, this was um, after the Dream Girls tour back a decade ago. Now, more than that. Um We had just come back from the road after being, you know, the snow kept many people in Detroit. I was like, I'm out of here. (laughs) (laughs) Um, And found a flight to Baltimore, drove up to New York. Um, So that happened. And then I, at that time, they were getting ready to start rehearsals for Sister Act, um, which I actually found out from a mutual friend of ours, Rashidra, um, that they, 10 years ago yesterday, just started oh rehearsals gosh. for that, for the original production. Yeah, crazy. Um, so they had just started rehearsals. That show was already on my radar just because of the movie and knowing the movie and like strong black lead. I need to be in it somehow. Let me just keep my eyes on it because clearly I'm not in this original cast. They have the cast. <clears throat> um and pretty quickly, like early spring, they had a need for a replacement for the Dolores cover. And um, this was with Telsey Casting at the time, who believed that I could not sing. And so they did not want to call me in. <laughs> oh, God. That <laughs> yes. is the scary part, right? When a casting director decides something about you and you can not change their mind <laughs> right. to save the world. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So um, my agents did what agents do and called and called and called and emailed and called and emailed and called and called (laughs) for weeks. Um, And actually, there was an agent at the office at the time um, who went to school with one of the agents who was like, could you please just could you please just do me? Please just do me a solid. I promise you. I promise you she will not let you down. So finally, they were tired of all the harassment. <laughs> and they're like, fine, we'll see her. Um, and I got the size. And I kid you not, my, my agents were like, you need to get this. <laughs> I was like, yeah, I'm not letting this opportunity go. This is like the future of everything. <laughs> I need to prove to them that like I can say I can do what is required. So I went in. I had workshopped the song with my voice teacher and my managers and like got it all taken care of. Um, I went in and they loved it. So then they called me back uh, the following week for the final callback because it was a pretty quick, quick turnaround. turnaround. Mm. Um, and so there were 10 of us. I like to say there was the tall group and the short group. <laughs> and I was the tall girl of the short group. <laughs> um Black women, it was actually really wonderful. Black women of all shapes and sizes, colors, just fully melanated. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, we danced first um, because we had to be the nuns too. So, um, And also that track. Are you familiar with the show? I saw it once with okay. Austin. Ooh, was it 2012? You saw the we tour? don't know. We do, we don't know. No, we we went to we went to New York and saw it. Yeah, when I think I it was twenty twelve. I might have seen you. Yeah. I'm trying to remember that it was either twenty twelve or twenty thirteen that we went. And was was Raven Simone in yeah. it? Yeah, Raven Simone was in it. Yeah, yeah. Depending on when in twenty twelve, I might have been there. Memphis <laughs> was still going. Newsies was still going. That's all I can remember, but I don't. I don't want to interrupt this story. It's okay. I'm, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, oh gosh, where was I? I was talking about. Oh, you had to dance group, a little bit because. First. Oh yes. So yeah. there's a fantasy sequence where there's like dancing pirouettes and things. Mm-hmm. So oh. there was. I know. <laughs> 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 so I had to Ooh. like do that, and then there was also like a handography situation because the nuns are not doing pirouettes; <laughs> they're like, <laughs> you know, uh, that <laughs> yes. Um, and so we had those two combinations. Everybody did them, um, and then we all had a moment to change, and then we all stayed to sing and do the sides. 
And all of us went. And as the day progressed, they would release people that they didn't want to see anymore. And so I literally was the last woman standing um, <laughs> at the end of the day. And uh, what I thought was really cool is that they offered me the job in person. In person? Oh, in man, person. that's awesome. Because yeah. this is your Broadway debut and they're just telling you, you don't have to wait. You don't have to go home. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, it was really, really cool. Um, Jerry Zachs was the, was the director and he came out and he's like, so we're gonna um, give it to you. He's like a short little man with this voice. He's great. Anyway, um, so that was a really wonderful uh, experience. And then I ran to, this is the old Telsey building. So like they had that sort of U shape um, with all of the, the uh, rooms in a row and then off to the left was the bathrooms. So I like shook his hand was like, yes, I want to do the job. And then (laughs) ran to the bathroom with my phone and was like, mommy, (laughs) I just booked Broadway. (laughs) (laughs) That is so amazing. (sighs) I have another anecdote to that story, actually. Um, A really, really good friend of mine, I was able to call him in a normal voice (laughs) and tell him that I had booked the show. Um, And we went to the theater, actually, um, just to just take pictures. It was at the Broadway theater. So they have like the the marquees and the marquee and the pictures sort of going around the side of the building. So we went all the way around and we're taking pictures and ended up in front of the stage door. And they were having understudy rehearsal. And the props master just happened to open the door. And he was like, are you the new girl? <laughs> wow. <laughs> I was like, yes. <laughs> He's like, come here. So he had me come inside and I got to stand on the stage. They'd finished rehearsal. I got to stand on the stage at zero and just take in the space. Like I get chills now. Just I had never stood on a Broadway stage before, you know, and to to be welcomed in that way. Like you're part of the family. Come here, have your moment. Yeah, and then we'll get to work. <laughs> that is incredible. And that was yeah. was that the same day? The same day. Oh my gosh! How crazy is that? That is unheard of. That's one of those New York stories, you know. Mm-hmm. Oh my gosh! Yeah. Yeah. So uh, did you start rehearsal short, like pretty soon because it was such a quick turnaround? Or? Pretty soon after. I mean, we still had a lot of time. We had like four weeks to learn the show. It was me and one other woman who was coming in for someone's maternity leave. Mm. Um, but I think the reason why it was such a quick turnaround that actually was rather delayed was they were in the middle of Tony season. Like, so they oh. were dealing with, okay, what are these numbers that we're going to do for the Tonys. What are we doing? Cause Patina was nominated. And like, I imagine the show was nominated for best musical, like among other things, like they were focusing on that. And they also had to put the two of us in the show and new costumes and all the stuff. There's just a lot of, a lot of things in the mix. That is a lot. Oh my gosh. Um, I've, and now I'm thinking now, because I know they hired you as a Dolores cover and I can imagine with this new show and this also being your Broadway debut, that being a cover for Dolores was a lot. <laughs> it was a lot. I mean, so I guess this has sort of been my trajectory. I, I've always covered more than one thing. Mm-hmm. Um, so I had the benefit of time, mm. um, which is to say that Rashidra was already rehearsing and she was already a cover. Um, and then I was able to focus on like covering her <laughs> or like <laughs> the other things that I had to cover and could spend the time to really observe Dolores isms and really create my own character. Um, but yeah, there was a lot of pressure that I put on myself because I wanted to do it right. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think if I were to go back and do that experience again, I would want to remind myself, they hired you because you're you. Mm -hmm. So you should just do do your Dolores. (laughs) Because that's the best Dolores for you is your Dolores. Not you trying to be Patina or Rashidra or anybody or Raven, you know. Yeah, I think that is a challenge as a performer. 
And sometimes that that knowledge of, oh yeah, I'm I am enough. I know it sounds so cliche because everyone's saying that now, but um it clicks in and you realize that what you have to offer is enough. And mm-hmm. especially if they hired you, guess what? <laughs> they want you. But I feel like throughout my career, I if I forget it and then I need a reminder and then I forget and then I need a reminder because we uh, we get on different levels, right? So maybe when you're doing this bus and truck circuit, you're like, I'm good. I know what I do. I'm good. And yeah. then you get on Broadway, you're like, oh, hold on. Okay, now I'm good. I'm good. And then, you know, maybe even when you start doing the voiceovers, wait, am I doing this right? You know, it's just like each time you continue to grow and mold and shape, you need a, a little, you know, like a click in to, rem- to remind yourself, oh, what I'm doing is it's all right. I am doing the work. Kimberly, mm-hmm. I know you. You are a hard worker. <laughs> There's no way that you are, you know, not putting in the work. I'm going to say that to remind you, too. You put in the work. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Don't be hard on yourself. I mean, if, if it works, I know it works for you to be hard on yourself because that's where you are. That's why you are where you are. But we got to sit down and enjoy it sometimes, too. Yeah, absolutely. It can't be, especially in, in, in this industry, the work can't be work. <laughs> the work the work has to have some joy. Mm-hmm. You know? Otherwise, why are we doing it? Mm-hmm. It's this this industry is entertainment is so unstable. To ha- to not enjoy it is foolish. Why would you put yourself through that? You mm-hmm. know? Absolutely. Even though there is work effort involved. Yeah. You know? We were talking with Stephen Carlisle a few days ago and um we were talking about, you know, the experience that that theater and Broadway can kind of feel like golden handcuffs because you it's such an amazing opportunity. But at the same time, it's such a grind and such mm-hmm. a machine. And the expectations we put on ourselves can feel like an imprisonment, mm-hmm. um, especially when you reach a certain level. You know, you are a Broadway actor. You have done several shows on Broadway. You just originated a show in Hadestown. And (laughs) so I feel like, I mean, I feel it. I've only done two and I feel it is that, that, you know, I can't let anybody down. I don't want to let myself down. I have so much to prove now. I have to keep this momentum going. That is a lot. And a lot of it comes internally, I think. Mm -hmm. I don't think there are people outside of us doing this to us, but for some reason we do it to ourselves. I don't know why. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. We do it to ourselves because we think that other people are thinking that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What will they say if I don't, you know, do this thing? What will they do if whatever? Now, I will say... If people are showing you who they are, <laughs> like if you're in a scenario where they are like coming for other people because they're not doing the work, mm. you better observe and act accordingly. Do yeah. the work. Make sure they're not talking about you like how they're talking about those other people. Yeah. But um, yeah, I none of us are telepaths is that a word (laughs) (laughs) we'll say it is is. none of us know what anybody's thinking so all all we can really do is just do our best yeah and enjoy doing our best and enjoy doing our best because you know we're always auditioning we're always Mm -hmm. on the grind if we're not i mean that is the majority of what we do and so if we're not at least enjoying the auditions what are we doing you know Mm mm-hmm Absolutely. I want to talk about Hades Town for the last little bit. You know, there's a couple more things I want to talk to you about before we head over to the curtain call. And one of them is most definitely Hades Town because I remember we were backstage at the Lion King in between scenes. And Kimberly, you came over to me and you were like, I have something. And I was like, oh my God, what is it? <laughs> and you're like, I just booked a new show. And I was like, what? <laughs> you're like, it's this new show. You know, they did it in, in the West End and now it's coming here and I've been workshopping it, you know. And I was just like, what is this show? And that show was the, the Broadway sensation. How many Tonys did y'all win? 13, 12? We- something for- I was like we won eight, but we were nominated for 14. Okay, so the nominations, yeah. <laughs> 14 nominations, eight Tony Awards, 
big, huge hit show, Hades Town. Tell us about it. What was that like? Oh my gosh. <laughs> First of all, <laughs> that day was crazy because they, that was a two show day when I told you, and they had just called me between shows. So I hadn't really you went been to an able- audition between? No, 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 no. Like they oh. called to tell me be- that I had oh. booked it between shows. So I hadn't really been able to talk about it. So when I told you, like it had just happened. Oh my God. <laughs> it was very exciting. Um, yeah, this show uh, has been a dream come true in many, many ways. Um, and also really hard, like mm-hmm. difficult. I don't know that any amount of warning, and I didn't really receive any, um, can prepare you for the rigors of building a new show for Broadway, Um, especially one that is opening right before Tony's season begins. Like the amount of mental quickness and toughness that you have to have, um, the collaborative spirit that you have to have, um, the joy that you have to have. So people enjoy coming to work with you because you're with each other all the time. <laughs> um, it's hard. I did not know. I, I found myself being very tired. As you know, I, I overlapped a week just for my own ego so I could say that I was in the Lion King for five years and not be shy a week. Oh, <laughs> I did not realize that. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Um, I would not do that again. <laughs> For all of you out there, don't do double duty with a new show. Like, just focus. <laughs> focus on the task at hand. And that will also help you, like... Show up for yourself, too. Like, you can go home afterwards. You can review what you learned that day. Or you can take a bath or eat dinner with your mm-hmm. whoever or watch your favorite TV show or just drink some tea and relax for a moment so that you can be mentally and physically prepared for work the next day. Like, th- there was a lot. There was a lot I didn't know. I, I just didn't know all of that was required. Now, that being said, it was really cool to experience all of it. And it was really cool to be able to come to work and, you know, we have a task at hand. We have the material, but also be able to to collaborate in a way like, okay, this thing might not work. This lift might not work, but this cartwheel, I've never done one before, but we'll try it. Oh, it works. Cool. That's it. <laughs> um, or, you know... This note is hard for somebody, so I'll sing it. Or, you know, this is the chord. Let's make it sound like this. Oh, you mean like this? Yeah. Oh, yeah, that sounds great. Just really collaborating collaborating to ensure that we are producing the best, most full piece of artistic work. Um, mm-hmm. I think that had a lot to do with who was in leadership um, in our show as well. Um, but... Uh, yeah, I I wouldn't replace this experience for anything. Um, also, as far as like live theater things, I am learning a lot about show coverage. And I definitely do not take for granted the number of swings and understudies they had in Lion King. Um, because we are undercovered <laughs> in Hades Town. There have been some very interesting scenario i've had to go on for parts that i don't cover and had to oh learn my gosh learn the whole thing between shows with automation darkness fog lanterns tambourines, flying. Lantern, like all sorts of stuff um because we can't really do a cut track sh- it's like it just doesn't it I doesn't can't work see that working yeah it because doesn't. there's it's such an ensemble show in that way mm-hmm. yeah wow yeah. Kimberly. So I've been learning a lot. A lot of learning, a lot of joy, a lot of new experience. Like I got I got to perform on the Tonys and I got to share that experience with you. Like how yeah. cool is that? <laughs> to be able to share like dreams coming true with friends. That it's was kind just of crazy. A, a gift, truly. I remember watching the Tonys the year before in 2018 with my friend Travis. My friend Travis was visiting New York. He was we, he and I were on the couch watching the Tonys, right? Mm-hmm. I hadn't booked Kiss Me Kate yet. You hadn't booked Hades Town yet. You know, to know it, like there was no way in my mind 
that I was going to be performing in the Tonys with you the next year. And yes. Jelani, we were all there. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that was so amazing. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. amazing. Truly. Um, we also didn't have the coverage that we needed at Kiss Me Kate. We had a few close calls, um, but we we also had a, a what is it a scheduled closing date. So uh, we were like, we you know we only need to figure this out for four months. But right. for you guys, you know, y'all, y'all you're going. I know when Broadway comes back, Hades Town will be one of the shows to come back to return. So. Um, I know if anyone can learn a, a track last minute, it is you. Oh, <laughs> so <thank> you. <laughs> I'm sure nice. you were fantastic. <laughs> and I'm I'm so glad that you were safe and that it worked out. Me too. Yeah. Me too. <laughs> I'm also glad that, well, so it's interesting. We were actually preparing, like contractually preparing for the same scenario for the following week. Mm-hmm. I ended up having to go on for a fate. So I had been learning the violin um, to be able to go on in the scenario where, you know, Eurydice was out because both of the swings cover Eurydice and they are also the other two fate covers. And it just so happened that the one fate that I covered was in the building. (laughs) Right, because you covered the fate that plays the accordion, right? Right, yeah. So you had to learn, you already had to learn the accordion. And yeah. now you're learning the violin right. so that you can cover these tight harmonies mm-hmm. that the fates do. Oh my God. Right. <laughs> but when I ended up having to go on, I ended up going on for the other one who does oh. the bells and the tambourines and things. I had to figure out a different harmony. <laughs> you are blowing my mind right now. Is she the I soprano? Is that the soprano? She's the middle. The middle. Ooh, ooh. Mm-hmm. Listen for it. <laughs> <laughs> what is my pitch? <laughs> exactly. Oh my gosh. Exactly. Oh my gosh. Okay, so I don't want to take up too much of your time on on the show proper because I still want to sit down and chat with you about these curtain call topics. So I'm gonna cut us, I'm gonna I'm just gonna uh, pass it over to you because I do want to talk a little bit about Broadway Serves yes. because I want our listeners to know about Broadway Serves, that you co founded with two other friends on Broadway, what you all do, how we can support Broadway Serves, anything mm-hmm. you want to say. Yeah. So, um, so many anniversaries. <laughs> uh, so Broadway Serves actually came about while I was in Sister Act. Um, three of us, three fabulous Black Broadway women, uh, myself, Dion Figgins and Dana Maria Ingram. Uh, we were at the Million Hoodie March following the murder of Trayvon Martin. This was almost nine years ago now. Um, and yeah, we we were just so inspired, but we went with other Broadway folks. It was between shows. We could go to the march and then make it back for our shows. Um, and we were just so inspired by uh, the impetus to want to act and to engage in society and making the community better and more accountable to each other as a community. Um, and the two of them knew each other and I just met them there and was like, y'all are great. <laughs> how, do we, how do we continue this? Um, so we exchanged information and ended up meeting a couple weeks later and just started brainstorming how we can engage the community, um, how we can engage the community. And we decided the best, most inclusive way to do so um, is to create and facilitate community service opportunities. Um, Thus was born Broadway Serves, um, but it's really open to any theater professionals and their families or friends, um, whether you've been on Broadway or not. Um, and ultimately, we provide community service opportunities for people to to participate in. We have a lot of partner organizations that we work with, um, and we also create original programming. Um, now, COVID times have been a little difficult. <laughs> just <laughs> I can imagine in terms of trying to make sure that you know everyone's safety is paramount. Mm-hmm. Um, so we've sort of been doing like a hybrid model where we do um, virtual community service activities, remote um, via Zoom or, you know, home arts and crafts activities that you can like send to a destination. Um, And then we just provide a list of things that if people want to um, go in person on their own, then they have the information to arrange that for themselves. But the hope is 
you know, when the Rona's done, <laughs> we can go back and uh, build community together and, and really uh, make sure that in addition to being full artists, that we are also full human beings. Absolutely. And I think that only enriches the art, right? It enriches Absolutely. the work that you do when you're having real human being experiences and, and seeing real life happen. And yeah. I've always admired this about you, that you're always in the community, always working. You're, with, you're, you're going to Brooklyn in between shows to help your mom with her outreach. You're coming back. You know, yeah. you're just really incredible and so steadfast in it, you know. So it's, it's wonderful to see. And we're going to drop down the website for Broadway Serves so that everyone can see that, as well as following you on Instagram. It, it, it's yes. at Miss Kiz, Kim Mizzo, right? Yes, at, Miss Kim yes. Mizzo. Yes. Got my Brooklyn roots, Kim to the Izzo. <laughs> Hey, hey to Kim the to the Izzo. <laughs> <laughs> and we are going to close out before, uh, we're going to close out. What am I saying? We are going to close out and Kimberly and I are going to go over to the curtain call and chat a little bit more.